Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video, we're gonna be talking about 30 tips, tricks, and things you need to be doing to become a better player in Red Dead Online. So we've got a lot to jump into today, so let's not waste any more time and let's get it started. So the first thing you might not have known about is that there's actually an online menu where you can actually edit your horses. So for this, you need to hit left on the D-pad and then go to stables. And under stables, there's a handful of options that you can actually check out. The first that I would recommend changing is horse access. So if you wanna prevent Grand Theft Horse, I would set it to either me only, friends, posse only, do not have it set to everyone. Because if you have it set to everyone, anyone can jump on your horse and take it and do whatever they want, which is obviously not what you want. So that's the first thing I would change. There's also another option under there that is allow leading, which would allow other players to lead your horse while you're riding it. I have this disabled just because I feel like it's the same thing with horse access. I don't want everyone to be able to do it. And because your only options are enable and disable, uh, I have it set to disable. Now on the off chance that someone does get on your horse and you don't want them on there, there is a dismount option that will force players from your horse. Similar to GTA Online where you could kick people out of your personal vehicle. It's very similar to that. Now there's a couple of other options as well. You can actually set default horses for different things you're doing. So for example, if you have four horses with four different styles, uh, you can set one for race, one for story mission, one for competitive, and one for free roam. This is quite nice because there are, like I said, some horses that might specialize in races, some that might specialize in death matches where they have higher health or stamina. So that's really nice that you can do that right there. And you can also check on what horses you own. You can check on own horses, compare their stats, and see what the bonding level is at the bottom too. So that horse menu is very interactive and can help you out with a bunch of stuff. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to know about is the mini map and the player icons. So the majority of players you're going to encounter are going to have a bright pink circle. A bright pink circle is just a normal player. That's just gonna be your average Joe that's running around. A circle that looks like it's faded means that this is a player you cannot interact with. They are inside of a store, they are exiting a cutscene. you cannot inflict damage to them and they cannot inflict damage to you. Pretty simple. Then if you see someone with a star, that means that they are a posse leader. So posse leaders are starred in pink and anyone in your posse is going to be blue. So it's the same things. If you start a posse, you will become the blue star and other people that join you will be blue circles. So that's the mini map icons explained. Now let's talk about the next thing, which is proximity chat. Is there proximity chat in Red Dead Online? The answer is yes, but it's not as close as you think. As long as you're in the same state as someone, you can hear them. And if you want to mute people, that's super easy to do. You just pull up the player menu where you can mute individuals or you can mute everyone at once. So a lot of people have their voice chat set to everyone, which is actually something you can adjust. And I would actually recommend changing it to friends, posse, or crew only. Uh, that's just so you don't hear you know, random people and their smoke alarms going off. So that's something that you can set as well. Up next, let's talk about posse. So you can join someone's already created posse if it's publicly available, or you can actually start your own. And posses will be three different types. They will be private or public, they will be temporary or persistent, and they will be honorable or dishonorable. Those are sort of your differences right there. Now, the difference between a temporary posse and a persistent one, a persistent one is saved and has full functionality, and it also costs $200 to start. So it's kind of a big deal. Now you can also change your name, and this also gives you access to having seven people in your posse as compared to three others that can join you. So there are some big differences right there, and a persistent posse is the only one that's going to be able to create a large camp. 
a temporary posse is only going to have a small camp available to them. Something else you might not have known about is you can actually manage your camp even if you're away from it. So you can actually see here that I have the option to check out my camp stats. And if I had a persistent posse, I could go from small to large. And I can also raise the white flag or not, which would basically take away or disable my passive mode. So that's something you can do from that interaction menu. The next thing you need to know about is the different walk styles. There's actually six of them. You've got casual, crazy, flamboyant, gunslinger, redefined, and silent. So I'm almost positive that as Red Dead Online is continually updated, Rockstar will add more of these. But as it stands right now, these are the six styles in which you can choose from. Now, another thing you can actually do from the in-game menu is emotes. Now, by default, you're going to all get the same emotes. However, there's actually more available that you might not have known about. If you go to the emotes tab, you can actually see under each one, which is greet, taunt, action, and reactions, there's two of each. And you only get to start with one of each in the sort of equipped ones. So you might notice that you have a thumbs up, or you might notice that you can spit instead of shoot them up. These are all things that you can add to your quick interaction menu so that you can do those emotes. And you might not have known you had those extra ones, so that's actually something that you should totally check out. Now, another thing you can do from that menu is join any of the in-game PvP activities. So whether that's a small or large series showdown, a race series, or a story mission in which you can go on call. You don't actually have to go to the physical locations. You can alter all of these from the in-game menu, which means you don't have to go to all these point-to-point -point places on the map. You can do them from wherever you want. Now, another thing you can do from this menu is actually respawn. So if you get stuck, lost, or you just want to kill yourself for whatever reason, you can. Now, sort of building off of that, there's no fee for respawning and dying in this game. You can die as many times as you want, and unlike single player, it is not going to cost you a fee. So you don't have to worry about that if you get ambushed over and over and over again. Uh, it's something you won't really have to deal with. Something else that's different from single player that's also quite nice is you can actually interact with your horse while it's at like a reasonable speed. So in single player, if you wanted to feed your horse, uh, you would actually have to come to a complete stop. And online, that's not the case. You can feed your horse while at a pretty brisk gallop, which means you won't have to stop and basically end all your momentum just to do things like filling up your horse's cores. Now you will have to stop if you wanna brush it, but that's something you're probably gonna be doing a little bit less of. Moving on, the next thing you might not have known about online is there's actually some clothing items that aren't in single player. Now, a lot of people aren't happy about this, and to a degree, I'm in the same boat because they've added a lot of cool clothing items, and a lot of them are like super high up, like rank wise, in order to unlock them. So, this one right here is like the Dong Gall sweater. That's kind of cool. That's not available in single player. So it definitely seems as if Rockstar saved a lot of clothing items for online. So go back to the general store or the tailor and check all the different clothes you can get because you might actually see some new items that you might not have recognized before. Speaking of those stores, when you're inside of a store, you actually don't have to worry about your horse taking damage from another player. When you're inside a store, your horse also gets invincibility, which means other players won't be able to do damage to it, uh, and they basically won't be able to grief your horse while you're inside and completely defenseless. I kind of like this feature from Rockstar, so I'm glad they added that into the game. Another feature that's kind of cool, just like in single player, you can actually modify your outfits. So you can change if your shirt collar is buttoned or unbuttoned, you can roll your sleeves up or down, and you can also tuck your boots inside of your, and you can also tuck your pants inside of your boots or choose to have them on the outside. All you have to do is go to a tailor or any place where you can modify your wardrobe and you can make these changes just like you were able to do in single player. The next thing that I found pretty cool is there's a lot of interiors that are locked in single player or that might be saved for specific missions that you can actually go into in Red Dead Online Free Roam. So for example, the mayor of San Denis has this beautiful mansion on the west side of the city that you can actually go inside, which is traditionally locked and was really only used in one or two missions. And it's so cool, you can explore the entirety of this house and there's actually some things you can take from the inside as well. 
You can search drawers. You can take tonics and bread and uh, you know coffee and stuff like that. So it is really cool that you can basically just go in there and rob the mayor of his food. But it looks like some interiors like this are available. So I think it would be best to check out some other places like this in game that you might have experienced interiors in single player because they might become available in Red Dead Online just like the mayor's house, which is super neat to explore and check out. Now, something that is a little bit different than single player, and that is dynamic hair and beard growth. So that does not exist in online. You can get any haircut you want, any style. You can get any beard you want in any style too. So it does not grow naturally like it does in single player. Some of you guys might like that. Some of you might dislike that, but it does allow you to go to the barbershop and essentially change your look at any time. You won't have to like wait on, you know, weeks or weeks to get a certain hairstyle. It doesn't work like that. Something else that doesn't necessarily work like it does in single player is looting other players. You can't loot other players. You can loot NPCs, but you can't loot other players. And you also cannot rob stores like you can in single player. It just won't allow you to take your gun out, mainly because I feel like that would just encourage griefing and it would close down the stores for other players. So Rockstar does not allow you to do either of those two actions in Red Dead Online. Now something they did add from single player, but you do need to be careful of, is fast traveling. So if you have any item on the back of your horse, like a pelt or a person, and you fast travel or you join another lobby, like for example, if you start a race and then you come back to free roam, that pelt is not going to be there. So again, if it's fish, pelts, parts, whatever the case is, basically get it off the back of your horse before you leave free roam. That's just like a general tip that I would definitely recommend you take advantage of. Another thing you should take advantage of is to see some of the familiar returning faces, not only from Red Dead Redemption 2 single player, but the first Red Dead Redemption game. So for example, this stranger mission right here at the McFarlane Ranch, guess who this is? None other than Miss McFarlane, Bonnie McFarlane. So that's kind of cool that you are going to run into characters that you are not only going to recognize from RDR2, but also the first Red Dead Redemption game as well. And I think that that is pretty neat. Now, another thing that I would recommend you guys do, download the companion app. So a lot of times I'll find myself having to open up the map a lot. And you can actually avoid this if you have the companion app. You just keep it open on your smartphone, your tablet, or another monitor if you've got it hooked up that way. And that way you won't have to constantly open up the menus and go back and forth between map and gameplay. You can just constantly have the gameplay up, and you can have the map, and all the other features the companion app has on another uh, screen or another monitor. And finally, last but not least today, our 30th tip of the video, and I feel like this one's kind of important. If you're struggling with the treasure hunts, so you get treasure maps every couple of levels in Red Dead Online, I would recommend turning on controller vibration. The controller vibrates more when you get closer to the treasure chest. That way you're not aimlessly walking around the golden area looking for the chest. You can just sort of feel the vibrations and when they start getting faster, then you know you're getting closer. So that's one tip I would definitely recommend. But anyways, that right there is 30 tips, tricks, and things you need to be doing in Red Dead Online that will make you a better player. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. Do you have any other tips, tricks, things that people should be doing? Let me know your thoughts, opinions, and more in the comments down below. If you did go on to enjoy this video though, a like rating would of course be awesome. And subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily Red Dead Redemption 2 videos like this. With all the way guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.